Greetings, everyone. I welcome you once again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And this is Brother Scott bringing you another Baptist Bread Daily Devotional. And today is Friday, November 29th, and we made it through another uh, Thanksgiving to God day uh, yesterday, but uh, again, we should be thanking God every day and thanking the Lord for all of our daily provisions and blessings that he gives us and and uh, provides us with. Amen. And thank him especially for saving our soul if you're saved and washing away our sin and going to that cross and dying for us and rising again the third day according to scripture. So let's be thankful every day, not just one day a year, but Every day and every moment. Amen. Alright, so today's topic is titled, Take Up His Cross. And the verse is from Mark 8, 34. And it says here, And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. Mark 8, 34. <clears throat> Amen. All right. So the author today, uh, the initials is PH, and that is short for, let's go here, PH. Uh, let me see here. Oh, no, it's PF. Sorry. Uh, PF is, let's see here. Uh, that would be Paul Frederick, and he is pastor of Cornerstone Baptist Church in Salem, Illinois. All right. So let's get started on the topic of take up his cross and so as we start out here he's uh writes here he goes uh says here as aspect of or uh, an aspect of following christ excuse me let me read that again and aspect of following christ we seldom think about uh is taking up the cross so an aspect of following christ we seldom think about is taking up the cross he says to take up the cross means to be identified with the Lord Jesus Christ, who laid down his life on Mount Calvary. It is opening up one's self to opposition. Yep. Uh, the Romans didn't crucify Jesus because he was a popular guy. The Jewish leaders hated him and wanted nothing to do with him. Yep, that's exactly right. Uh, they opposed him at every turn. The world will also oppose us if we are living for him and doing his will. Taking up the cross is opening uh, is opening us to shame. Uh, taking up the cross is opening us to shame. But we shouldn't be shamed. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if, what he meant by that, but uh, we shouldn't be ashamed of, uh, of taking up the cross and following Jesus. I don't know why that would be a shameful thing. Because it shouldn't be ashamed. You, uh, uh, if you're ashamed of, if ashamed of Jesus and ashamed of taking up the cross, well, shame on you. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what uh, what he meant meant by that, but uh, okay. Well, moving on. Taking up the cross is opening us to shame. All right. Well, if you're ashamed to take up the cross and follow Jesus and ashamed to preach the gospel, well, all right then. Okay. I guess that's uh, on you. The cross was not the uh, the cross was not the way a noble man, noble man died. It was the execution that was limited to the worst, most vile of criminals. Uh, okay, I see what he's saying here. All right, so taking up uh, taking up your own cross, I guess. Uh, not sure. All right, well, uh, maybe I'm uh, wrong on that, but. Uh, I would hope that you wouldn't be ashamed to to uh to uh take up take up the uh your cross and follow Jesus and be crucified uh with him because uh as the Bible says I'm crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ liveth in me amen and so on and so forth so uh so the shame uh was part of the punishment when we take up the cross we are subject to shame and ridicule as well because people will shame you and ridicule you but uh that's okay because you stand for the truth and if you don't want to stand for the truth then you should be ashamed 
for not uh, standing for the, the truth. Amen? As I was stating earlier. So I would hope that you want to, want to take up the cross. And if the world's going to shame you and ridicule you because you want to do it, well, oh well, that's on them. Because they're going to perish in their sin and they'll realize one day that you were right and they were wrong. All right. So the world will look down on us. They will not understand or our desire to serve the Lord. That's right, because they don't want to serve the Lord. They don't want to trust Jesus as their Savior. Amen. So that'll be on them one day. But uh, we just got to keep out there and keep getting out there and trying to uh, get people to Christ. Amen. So take up the cross also means to be willing to suffer. Yep. So you might suffer. Uh, some have suggested that crucifixion was the most painful method of capital punishment used throughout the ages. That says nothing of the spiritual anguish the Lord Jesus Christ experienced as he became sin for us and the Father turned his back on him. At times we may be called to suffer for Christ as we take up the cross and follow him. Take it up and follow him, he says. Amen. I agree. Let's take it up and follow him. Amen. And even if the world shames you and ridicules you for doing so, let's keep doing it. And if you're ashamed of taking up the cross and following Jesus and ashamed of the gospel, then uh, I, would, I wouldn't I would be ashamed of it because uh, the world doesn't care about you. The devil doesn't care about you or I or any of us Christians. Uh, they they could care less. They, they just want to go about their lives. So... All we need to do is just keep going out there and preaching the gospel and telling people about Jesus and getting out there and and denying self and denying the world and the flesh and the devil and picking up that cross and keep going. Amen. All right. Well, that was the topic of take up his cross. So are you uh, willing to take up your cross and follow the Lord or are you just going to sit back and be like, oh, I'm saved. I don't need to do anything. And uh, that's the wrong attitude to have, friend. So let's get out there and do things for the Lord and get in your Bible and read it and study it and pray without ceasing and do do the will of the Lord. Let the Lord have full rule and reign in your life. Amen. And that seems to be a hard thing for us to fully allow the Lord to rule and reign in our hearts. So let's uh, learn to do that better and pray the Lord and have him help us. Amen. All right. So. Now we will be in the Bible reading part of the devotional. And so if you have your Bible, let's turn to 2 Peter chapter 2. So 2 Peter chapter 2 today. Um, so if you have your Bible, please turn along with me and we'll read 2 Peter chapter 2. Amen. All right. So 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 1 says thus. And it says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, uh, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that uh, bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. So watch out for those, uh, those uh, false teachers, amen, those that want to try to drag you away from the Lord, and following the Lord, and want to uh, bring you to what they're they're believing in and all that stuff. Uh, verse two, and many shall follow their uh, pernicious pernicious, uh, pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now. Of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation uh, slumbereth not. For God, uh, for if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the f uh, flood upon the world. Of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those 
that uh, after should live ungodly, and deliver the just lot, vexed with the filthy uh, conversation of the wicked, for the for that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, right, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Uh, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, uh, bring it not railing accusation against them before the Lord, but these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they uh, understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the day in the daytime. Uh, spots they are, and blemishes, spotting themselves with their own uh, deceivings, while they feast with you, huh. having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, uh, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way, and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of uh, Basor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking with the man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. Uh, there are wells without water, uh, these are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure the, uh, through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein, and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Who, yeah, yikes. Uh, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they had known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them, so to be worse for those that have heard the word of God and the truth and the gospel and reject it. It'll be worse for those people than it was for those that did not hear. Uh, but it is happened unto them according to the true uh, proverb, the dog is turned to his vomit again, and the sow that was washed to uh, that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Hmm. Yikes. All right. Well, that was Second uh, Peter chapter two for the Bible reading for today. Amen. And so we will wrap it up for today. And again. Uh, if you have not taken up your own cross and decided to follow the Lord, today is the day to do that. If you're saved and you're just uh, just going about your daily life and not even doing anything for the Lord after you've been saved, well, uh, today is the day to make that decision to follow the Lord and to live for Him and allow Him to work and rule and reign in your life and to pick up that cross and follow Him. It's not going to be an easy walk, but uh, praise the Lord that we have... Uh, Jesus Christ with us all the time, the Holy Spirit living inside of us, and we should not grieve or um, quench the Holy Spirit. We should let him rule and reign and uh, deny the flesh. We have a choice to make every day after you're saved. It's a choice on who you're going to serve, either Christ or your flesh. So I hope you'll choose Christ. Amen. And if you're not saved, today is that day of salvation. 
And the Bible says, uh, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior and believe on his death, burial, and resurrection, he will save your soul. So hope you'll make that decision today to trust Jesus as your Savior and have him wash away all your sin. Amen. All right. Well, that will wrap it up for today. And tomorrow's topic is titled, Christ's Return, A Motivation to Win Souls. Yes, so um, because Christ is returning, this should be a motivation for us to go out there and be bold witnesses for Jesus Christ and tell people about what Jesus did on the cross because we know he's going to be coming back one day. So this be should be a motivation to go out there and try to get souls to Jesus. Amen. But uh, we can't force anybody to be saved, and the one, two, three, repeat after me doesn't work either because you got to really explain it to them, and sometimes you have to uh, get them all the way to the beginning of the Word of God and tell them who God is and all that stuff. And and as uh, as uh, Brother James and many others have said, you got to get them lost before you can get them found. So you got to uh, let them know that they're lost and their trespasses and sin, and that they're on their way to hellfire and perishing in their sin and and uh hope that they don't want to go there and then tell them the the good news of what jesus christ did for each and every man amen and woman and child amen all man all men uh can be saved it's up it's up to you it's your decision so hope you'll make that right decision and choose jesus and trust him as your savior amen all right well this is brother scott signing off for today so May the Lord richly bless you, and hope you have a great and wonderful rest of your Friday. Amen. And bye-bye for now. Remember, Jesus saves. Believe on him. Amen.